I'm delighted to welcome you to PwC's Strategy and Annual Industry Perspective Series, where we'll look at the upcoming trends in the oil and gas industry. I'm Alison Baker, the UK Head of Oil and Gas at PwC, and today I'll be talking to Viren Doshi, Strategy and Partner, and Adrian Del Maestro, Director of Research with a particular focus on energy. The oil and gas sector is clearly going through one of its most transformative periods in its history, which ultimately will redefine the energy industry as we know it. Um, the imbalance between abundant supply and weak demand is predicted to worsen, and the low oil price is likely to remain a feature in the year ahead. So Adrian, turning to you first, uh, you have lower oil prices. What are oil and gas producers doing to respond? They're doing a lot of things around cost reduction, but I think the key thing is they're going through a lot of pain. I mean, Alison, you mentioned in your introduction there about a transformative period in the sector. There is an enormous amount of change going in in the oil and gas sector. And they're looking at everything across their cost spectrum from capex. You look at upstream capex is forecast to decline by about 15% in 2016. There are reductions in the number of projects that are being sanctioned as well. Again, figures of the order of $200 billion. There are a significant number of layoffs, something of the order of 230,000 positions that have been laid off in, in, in 2015 alone. So enormous amount of pain there. And again, just to put this into context, if you look at the decline in the oil price that's happened recently, so the same order of magnitude as just after the financial crisis. Mm. And, and needless to say, unsurprisingly, you look at the results, the financial results in the last quarter for a lot of the majors, Many of them have posted uh, losses or significant declines in their performance. So it's really hurting the sector. Mm. And with that pain and hurt, Viren, you know, what are executives doing in addressing the medium and longer term vision for their organizations? So Alison, many of these executives in the oil sector, oil and gas sector are very progressive. Mm. And in fact, uh, some of them are already probably looking at their purpose and vision particularly with the backdrop of the COP21 that took place in Paris, around what's the future of the company, what's the role, where do they want to play their capabilities and leverage their strengths. So whilst cost cutting is going on, avoiding arbitrary cost reductions, so really being sensible about retaining the talent they want to keep and cutting the cost they can live without. And then the third lever that is really important to play on which has been going on, but now is going to bubble up to the surface, is around innovation, mm. innovating their way out of the carbon problem. They see it, they know it, they've heard it. Things like carbon abatement technologies that is very much in progress right now in the marine sector, working on things like algae to oil, or somehow if you can convert carbon into chemicals, yeah. that would be a game changer. Uh, looking at their entire value chain and figuring out how to not only produce energy and oil and gas, but to deliver it and make it efficient, carbon efficient in its consumption as well. Mm. So these are very progressive companies and they're taking some very active steps in this. And, and any particular examples of, of corporates that are already taking their, their lead from the future vision? Well, one bold one is clearly in the papers around Shell making that move on gas with BG acquisition. Mm -hmm. Even though we know in Europe right now, at least in many parts of the world, gas is not as profitable or economical to use for generating power compared to coal. And yet they're placing a long-term bet on gas as the cleaner fuel. Mm. And that's a good example of a, a bet for the future. Yeah. So the future, but obviously with the here and now in mind, Adrian, what does the sort of next 12 months hold? Well, it's going to be a challenging period, that's for certain. But I think there's two sides to this story. Certainly on, on one side, you can see there's still a lot of pressure on oil prices to stay low. So there's a lot of supply coming onto the market. You've got uh, Iran, if the sanctions are lifted, as early as Q2 this year, there'll be n nearly half a million barrels of new oil coming on. Uh, and it's not clear where the demand uplift is going to be to kind of keep oil prices buoyant. So lots of oil, a lot of demand, so oil price is likely to stay low for the foreseeable future. But I think the other side of the story is, is that we're talking about a sector that has proved itself time and time again. It's a resilient sector. And as Viren was mentioning, innovation is core to how they succeed. So they will emerge from this turmoil, that is for certain. So hope for the future. Adrian Viren, thank you for your thoughts today. In short, as we enter a second year of low oil prices, every company in the oil and gas industry will be challenged in a different way. Your skill at managing new business is part of this. 
and the industry will hardly disappear, uh, but it will certainly look very different 10 years from now. As you've heard today, further opportunities do exist in this period of adversity. We'll be looking in more detail at this landscape in PwC's upcoming report, New Energy Futures Perspectives on the Transformation of the Oil and Gas Industry, which will be due out in early February. So please look out for that publication. But in the meantime, thank you for joining us today.